This hour is sponsored by Addo, the power behind the storage. is NAB Show Live. You're watching NAB Show Live, brought to you by Broadcast Beat. It's the final day of NAB. And so we're going to talk a bit about emerging trends. Um, it's not loads of pre-written questions because we didn't know what the trends would be from the show. Um, so, Lorenzo, you're my ABM, what have, what have you seen at the show? What's... I've seen, uh, from my perspective, a lot uh, an increased focus on data. Data is the word I heard a lot right. uh, during the show. So uh, data in terms of uh, using data for so, uh, powering efficiency throughout yeah. the content chain, but also using data to augment consumer experiences. So, and then we get into uh, the, um, the quality aspect of it yeah. in terms of uh, AR as well, data visualizations in, in sports. And I've, I've seen increasing interest in AI as well although there's uh, still a lot of hype around it, uh, as, and yep. some of it is still a buzzword. But I, if I had to single out one trend, I would say data and the increasing use of data throughout the content chains to uh, increase efficiencies. Mm. Adam? Well, I think the big thing for me is it's kind of more of the same. Um, all the big trends that you'd expect to be here are here, uh, and it's more about the evolution of those uh, mm -hmm. those technologies rather than really big announcements that are blowing everything away. So uh, IP, 5G, uh, it, it's, it's all about acceptance, growing acceptance of those technologies yeah. uh, and, and uh, general increasing awareness across the show, I think. Yeah. Josh? Well, I was going to say, I, I think Lorenzo stole mine, but uh, uh, I, I have very little enthusiasm for shiny things on booths. I'm much more interested in what Lorenzo was talking about. So and I know he mentioned using data to try to inform some of the decisions around both the technology sourcing and also kind of understanding efficiency of the operations. And stop right there. I think that's the path to heaven because uh, that's the only way a lot of the underpaid people that I've been meeting with in exhibitor booths are going to be properly compensated for the technology right. and for the operational efficiency that they're bringing to this industry. Uh, yeah. Being a bit of a prisoner of the moment, Uyala has some case studies in the public domain talking about just the savings in terms of time mm. and processing time uh, for running global media organizations and moving content yeah. throughout the supply chain. Um, so there, we're starting to see these data points actually become much more popular as a talking point. Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago, like everyone it was just talking about monetization, uh. and then that word seems to have like disappeared this year. But is yeah. it actually happening, or is it just that people aren't talking about it because it's not the key trend? I don't. Yo, can, can I jump in? Yeah. I'll go first. Yeah. I think it's failure, right? Yeah. It's, it's failed. And, and I'm sure Adam can speak to this. Um, you, you look at the tragedy that has been the economics of a lot of these OTT services. Yeah. Mm. And, and with good fortune. I mean, there's kind of a couple of things that can happen. And you can't afford success with the way that we've built a lot of those economic models. Yeah. Uh, so the path to uh, making money in the future is first needs to begin with losing less money today right. on these initiatives. Yeah. And so I'll, well, I'll pass that one over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely different business model. I mean, uh, digital is completely different. Uh, and uh, if you look at the, the big companies, uh, Netflix spending so much uh, on content and yeah. constantly uh, borrowing uh, to um, sustain this uh, binge on, uh, yeah. on content and other comp companies uh, uh, jumping on the uh, direct-to-consumer bandwagon mm -hmm. as well. So it's, gonna, it's a very costly business. It's not the business it used to be in the, pa in the past yeah. with uh, uh, linear television. And uh, that's why I think there is the link to data and to powering efficiency as well. And uh, the, linking mm -hmm. back to the technologies, the emergence of new technologies such as cloud and AI, for example. Yeah. Yeah, well, what I found is quite interesting is the fact that um, I mean, everyone knows that the, the, the commercial reality of the industry is, is that 
everything's stretched. You know, budgets are stretched. Yeah. Um, but yeah, automation, less talking about AI, but more about the implementation, and therefore automation, it is been a big buzzword at the show. And that's been more about uh, creating more opportunities for monetization rather than reducing costs, which I find mm -hmm. quite interesting. That's all, it, it's, the last few years, it has all, all been about reducing those costs, you know, the move from CapEx to OpEx, that kind of thing. But now automation is coming along, it's actually more about that, you know, increasing those opportunities. It's a slightly yeah. changed mindset. Yeah. yeah, and also I think on AI, it's also, it's about automation, it's about value creation as well. So it's about uh, uh, generating more content uh, in an automatic way as yeah, well. So yeah. for example, taking uh, light sports highlights, uh, having the automation there uh, that allows you to uh, give more content to the consumer yeah. without incurring uh, more costs. So I think that's uh, the value crea creation uh, side of AI is important as well. Uh, and what about AR, VR, MR? Any other word ended in R? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you probably anticipate me with my shiny uh, object. I think AR, VR are science projects. I would love, I, I would love nothing else for those to become revenue realities within the memory of this conversation. I'm hopelessly pessimistic about that. <laughs> the, 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 the question uh, I think is very interesting. Is I, I, I take Adam's uh, point there on AI ML, because I, I do think there, there is definitely a there there. Uh, the fascinating thing to me is uh, you look at the R&D budgets of some of the really big uh, suppliers that are at this show, AWS, Google, making available their um, AI engine. So I, I, I would say to any of the vendors whose you know, CEOs actually come to these shows, yeah. you know, very important vertical for them, if, if you are investing in AI, or in other words, if you're investing in the same thing as Google or uh, AWS, one of you is wrong. Right, so there is an opportunity to leverage that type of investment. And if you're making any kind of investments into actual, so artificial intelligence, research and development, stop doing that yesterday. Or you have the opportunity to leverage those R&D budgets yeah. and bring the specialized aspects yeah. that are needed for this industry. Yeah, yeah, I certainly agree with that, uh, especially the, the, the specialty media services. And wow. uh, we've, we found that uh, media companies Still need that on top of the cloud. Uh, yeah. So and to come back on VR, AR, uh, I didn't hear anything during the show mm. about VR. Much more about AR, especially uh, in graphics to yeah. augment the consumer experience. But on VR, I, I heard someone saying even VR is that like uh, comparing it to 3D. Well, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. So, and it all uh, involves it's quite to wear striking. Something, yeah. It? <laughs> it's quite striking thinking about. Uh, how people were thinking about, uh, yeah. were, were talking about it uh, one or two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I find interesting about the the VR space is that uh, yeah, it's the usual problem of, of you know, how do you actually monetize it. It's great yeah. tech in theory, but how do you actually monetize that? And I was speaking to one company, and they were offering a 360 video solution for sports, and we had actually a similar conversations to this. Well, I was very honest, mm. so I kind of said, well, I'm quite skeptical about this. And, and they were sort of instructed me saying, we're thinking about it wrong. It's, this is not something that's going to be a, you know, an industry changer. It's not going to be replacing broadcast as we know it. But instead, it's another tool in the toolbox. So if you have a broadcaster that's offering um, a range of different services, it's the same as um, uh, cameras that track a player. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something that you can, you can uh, add to your offering to differentiate your offering but it's mm. not something that's going to revolutionize the market. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what is going to revolutionize the market? Oh, okay. if, if I could yeah. Yeah, jump in course. there. All right, so n nothing levels a discussion like that when looking at actual real numbers on the market. My good friend Lorenzo <laughs> over here and I, um, through a joint venture between the IBM and Devoncroft, we publish the market reference on sizing, uh, yeah. segmentation. And so if you look at that and you say, okay, this is actual sell out revenue, what's growing, right? Mm -hmm. Would be a different way to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And I would say things or, or equipment, software solutions that are benefiting from a lot of the new content spend that's taking place, Netflix, Amazon. Yeah. And when, when I say that, think cameras or things that sit off the camera. So a lot of the things that are perhaps less visited here in the Central Hall, I'd say also solutions and services that are helping 
companies globalize content with these global supply chains, so localization services, things like that. So what, what isn't growing, right, let's, this isn't a fairy tale, right? Let's, yeah. it's, it's things that are just yeah. starting to move into virtual environments or really being commoditized. So whatever, you know, there's 60 partners of AWS uh, at, at the show, uh, go take a look at some of those solutions. Those, those are categories that are really being right. uh, impacted. Yeah. yeah, and what I think is really important uh, to do is actually define what we mean by markets. Yeah. Because, yeah, we're yeah. at NAB, it's a broadcast show. Yeah. But actually, more and more you're talking to, to companies who are talking about business opportunities outside of broadcasts. You know, the, those worlds of AEV and broadcast are just mm -hmm. smashing together. Yeah. And, you know, there are some companies, particularly in acquisition, that are ahead of that curve. But you speak to the, the real traditionalist broadcast companies, and they are saying, well, where are these opportunities? You know, look at um, uh, PTZ cameras, for yeah. example. You know, they're popping up on all these stands that you know, the, these companies have never done cameras before, and all of a sudden they're yeah. featuring PTZ because the opportunity is this huge market that mm. hasn't really been addressed that much before. Corporate, uh, house of worship, particularly in, in the US, um, yeah, the AV world is absolutely uh, Yeah, and if you just have to look at the success of ISE, yeah. which has, oh, exactly. uh, you know, it has 35,000 more visitors now than IBC does. Exactly. And, and we, in like three years, that's yeah. grown. It's huge. Now you talked about sort of the M&A activity, you know, yeah. VizRT and, and Newtek, one of the reasons that went through is because VizRT are, are very good at the high end stuff, yeah. but Newtek are, are really strong at that low and mid range. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where there's, there's this huge opportunity opening up. And we're going to see more and more of that in future shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see some numbers put behind that opportunity. Deeply cynical of what the budgets look like in those verticals. I, I yeah. concede Adam's point that it exists, but I think most, <laughs> if not all, efforts I've seen to try to quantify it greatly exaggerate right. the opportunity. And that's why I know I've said this, and I know it disappoints them when I say this, but I was so looking forward to reading some details about that VizRT and NewTek acquisition, and they just were not disclosed. There were no specifics in that press release. I haven't had a chance to really interrogate the team, but I'm hoping yeah. <laughs> that they're gonna come out and yeah. give the disclosures that the world needs, because NewTek would be a great proxy on what those budgets and what those great growth rates look yeah. like. They're gonna have to disclose it anyway, so let's get out yeah, in front of it. Exactly. Let's get away from these conversations about bringing great teams together yeah. and empowering customers. Let's have you know, fact-based discussions yeah, yeah. about these types of opportunities. I, I think the important point yeah. about that, that sort of wider market is yeah. that you're right, how big that is is you know, uh, up for debate to a certain extent. But the point is for a lot of product areas, not everything, yeah. not everything, um, the broadcast market is mature. Yeah. Uh, and revenues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Revenues uh, are declining as everything becomes more commoditized. And as, there, as that happens, companies are being forced to look for new opportunities. So it's not necessarily that this AV world market is going to change the world. It's more that it's a necessity to look at that side of things. Yeah. And we, never, uh, we didn't mention esports, oh, which huge. is a yeah. huge opportunity. And we're seeing also traditional, some traditional suppliers uh, targeting yeah. that opportunity because, of course, there are huge audiences there. And uh, it's a completely different market because mm. it's more inclined to go softer as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a, a different inclination and I would say a less conservative approach mm. compared to broadcast to make certain jumps. And to come back on the cloud point that uh, Josh made, uh, I completely agree. And you see these big companies growing and small companies, as he said, growing on top of the cloud yeah. as well. Yeah. And rising to, uh, to appeal to the broadcast and media sector. But at the same time, tr traditional media companies are, are still growing through, I think, a difficult transition from uh, yeah. uh, capital expenditure to operating expenditure, which is uh, completely revolutionary in terms of uh, a different business model from a financial perspective, but also different approach to sales, uh, marketing, uh, uh, and uh, we, we see that they are still struggling with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've talked a bit, like a bit about the vendor side. What's like? Are there emerging trends on the customer side? 
you know, are things being done differently? Obviously, I mean, like with Netflix, I mean, everyone I know in LA works with Netflix now, or well, I think <laughs> their, what, their the, family does. The changing customer base for, for a lot of products is a really key thing that's affecting the industry at the moment. Yeah. I mean, if you look at I mean, esports, as you mentioned, um, uh, adoption of IP, a lot of it, uh, it is not dictated by, but uh, has a lot of generational trends. So, yeah. so you have someone who's at the end of their career, worked in the SDI their entire lives, they're gonna be more resistant to move to IP than, than others. Esports, it's a young industry. And in young, I mean, the, the average age of the people in that industry is very, very young. <laughs> and they're gonna have yeah. different expectations. Yeah, They've grown up with, with IP <laughs> and cloud, and so, yeah. yeah, they're gonna want different products. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about esports? I mean, is it, you know, Everyone, everyone's talking about it, but is it just live production broadcast, or is it? Let's, it, let's it, hope, right? Yeah. Uh, just yeah. another big customer. It, yeah. it, it, I'd it. say the, the most impressive thing I see with esports is their ability to extract money out of that proposition. Yeah. Some very clever business models that, hey, you know, good artists borrow, great artists steal. If they figured out a, a way to make money in those mediums, it, Let's let's yeah. Let's, yeah. Uh, let's learn from them. That's yeah. that's the really key point. It's it's yeah. they got it. They're, they're learning. They're experimenting at the moment. It's very very early days, um, but it is. It, how big is it going to be? Uh, the, the 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 viewership of esports in the under 25s is is really significant. They're incredible. Really yeah. significant. Right. Along with the S yeah. you know, the way that the younger generations are consuming content is completely alien to, to yeah. how older generations look at, and and that is shaping the industry. Yeah. And is it global or is it specific e countries? Yeah, is it? Uh, esports is global, but yeah. there are hot spots. You know, yeah. Asia, particularly Korea, yeah. uh, is is way ahead. Uh, there's a lot in uh, the US, Eastern Europe, actually Poland. There's quite a lot going. Really? On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and in the UK as well, there's, there's quite a lot. But just on on the previous point about you know, what tech they'd be using, from the research we're doing, we're actually doing a report at the moment on this. Uh, most of all, it's a broadcast. You know, you've got big um, uh, OB truck operators, uh, systems integrators going in there from the broadcast world. Right. The only difference is that the feed for all the different players is coming mm -hmm. from PCs. For the game, it's coming from the PCs, but it's just another video stream. Yeah. So what's going to be the big trend NAB 2020? Yeah, I would see... I would still focus on data, so I would still say uh, an increasing adoption and awareness of uh, AI and ML, yeah. and using that with the cloud as well to, to power efficiency throughout the, the content chain. Uh, so I, I, I think media companies are going through this transition and as they go direct to consumer as well, right. and they are transforming more from a B2B business to a B2C yeah. business, and that's a a, a big transformation for the for them and in that and they are using data much much and more just not just for uh, operational efficiency but also for increased personalization and for monetization for example so we are really seeing uh, an increase particularly at the forward looking companies yeah, yeah. josh I was going to say, I, I, I wasn't going to let Lorenzo steal my answer this time. I, I, I would say all the things Lorenzo just talked about, transparency of disclosure on that. I mean, it, secrecy is a disease in this industry. Yeah. Everyone keeps everything a secret. The ones that have figured out the answer, that are gathering these metrics, very reluctant to talk about it publicly. It's exceptionally difficult to get big media companies on stage to talk about a lot of the data points that Lorenzo was just mentioning. That's what I'm hoping, that's what I'm hoping and, yeah. and expecting, let me say that word, to be the big trend next Do you think that's unique to the broadcast sector, or do you think it's... I live and breathe in this yes. world, so I have, <laughs> yeah, I have a few other so. data points. Yeah, maybe Adam could take that one. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I'll yeah. comment on other yeah. industries, but I mean, for me, the, 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 it's going to be, again, more of the same, but yeah, progression. Um, yeah. IP is, is everywhere now, but we're now at a point where people are utilizing IP for, for actually sake yeah. of IP rather than just installing it. You just look at the adoption of NDI, for example. Yeah. Sony announcing their, their support is huge. There's a big rubber stamp of approval on it. Um, so I think we'll see the spread of that, the continuing spread. Uh, one thing we haven't mentioned, is 8K. Um, yeah. 
Now, I'm not saying that 8K is going to be used uh, you know, you know, very widely, but the point is that there is it's an Olympic year next year. Uh, Japan are pushing yep. 8K hard. Um, and it's not a future technology now. It is, it's a yeah. proven and technology. And at CES, that, that was a huge topic, wasn't it? Exactly. It's, so. it's, a, it's a technology that's a dead end. Yeah. There's nowhere to go with it. Yeah. If you invest in AK r and you're going to have two customers, right? It's, <laughs> it's a dead end. Let's get back to talking about data, making decisions yeah. based on data. We've got some business model issues we have to figure out. Let's get away from the shiny things. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It doesn't mean that, that people will. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other trend that you want to talk about? We missed anything out. I think, for, as I said, the cloud and yeah, I, I saw a lot more focus, uh, particularly from the media companies, as I said before, on uh, uh, AR. Not a lot of 5G. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't hear a lot of talk about 5G, and uh, also a lot of interest, and it's gradually improving, but it's not there yet on remote production. It's, not, uh, it's an activity, it's not a technology, but uh, there's, there's still some, um, some way to go there, yeah. uh, but increasing interest uh, still for um, uh, improving uh, uh, cost efficiencies, but that, in, in that, for that, uh, um, it's not always straightforward. So uh, one size that one model doesn't fit all everything. So we're seeing that sometimes it can be beneficial, but it depends on the circumstances as well. But we're seeing increasing interest from right. the customers in that as well. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think just for me, it's 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 the continuing of the need to do more with less. Yeah. It's, it's that drive just to make everything streamlined yeah. as possible. Costs are coming down as technology improves, uh, and that's going to continue. Yeah. I was uh, maybe if I could jump back to the previous panel Absolutely. and just say a support, uh, a word in support of M&A activity. There's a lot of this in the hallways. Uh, it's not a bad thing. You know, it, when a deal happens, it's not that someone lost and someone won. I think this is the natural evolution of the market. Uh, the the seller is benefiting likely from greater economies of scale, more distribution. The buyer, you know, yeah. in some respects, outsourced R and D. I, I think I think we should view these things very positively instead of instead of the negative connotation yeah. that they're typically viewed. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank uh, you. So that was the NAB Show Live, brought to you by Broadcast Beat. Thank you very much. This hour sponsored by Addo, the power behind the storage.